Hello, it's Jill. Welcome to Let's Reconnect. I'm going to talk today about coding stones. And the idea of coding stones came to me at the weekend. It was inspired by uh, my use of Ho'oponopono, a method that I learned about from Dr. E. Haleakala, who then you may have heard of. I actually wrote a book about it earlier in the year, and I was looking at this book, using this book, My Forgiveness Journal, 40 Days of Ho'oponopono. And the idea is that it's a practical guide to Ho'oponopono, so that you have opportunities as you work through days. And you can do this at ra- use this at random, you don't have to do 40 consecutive days. Um, I was thinking I might do 40 days when we come to Lent next year, and do it live and you know, so that you have an opportunity to work through the book with me. But um, you can dip in and out of it, and that's what I was doing. And I was looking at, because uh, each day you get a little bit more explanation about what it means. So um, something to reflect on. And then you have a, a response, you know, a, a task if you like. And I was looking at uh, this day where you can see it uses the graphic is like hexagons. It talks about the subconscious unihippini, which is the Hawaiian name for it. And it talks about how how um, how Ho'oponopono utilizes the unconscious to carry on doing the cleaning. And by cleaning I'm talking about cleaning up the memories that are in our collective unconscious as a human race. They, they, they belong to us all. So when you clean for your life, you're cleaning for everyone. Sounds strange because we're not used to thinking that way. We're used to the separation model. But as we move to the conscious model, we understand it's a completely different paradigm. There is no separation. And um, you can see here you've got some hexagons that give the teaching about the unconscious. And then at this side, we've got a task zone in and it's asking, it's inviting you to talk, to think about areas in your life that you want to clean on. And they might be personal situations that you're worried about, that you, uh, you know, you're hoping for a solution for. And then they might be something at a local level, something at a national level or, or, or globally. And so I was filling these in because there were a number of things on my mind. The very act of writing them down actually makes you feel as though you've kind of got it, it's it's very therapeutic. You feel as if you've got it up and out and that you're able to do something rather than mulling over your worries or concerns, especially if you've perhaps been watching the news and you you feel so hopeless, then uh, I needed to do something and this is what I was led to do. So I wrote a number of things. Now, one or two of those I might be able to share with you because they are global, so they affect us all. And then what, what my initial idea was that you would just hold this open as you'd return to it and maybe you'd place your hands over and as you've had your eyes closed and just moved your hand around the page, you're activating the cleaning at a subconscious level. You don't even have to be consciously aware because the book itself is becoming a kind of cleaning tool. And, uh, and so what you'd initially written and asked for, the, the, the cleaning continues. And by cleaning, uh, Ho'oponopono uses a mantra, I'm sorry, please forgive me, I love you, thank you. And the idea is that in saying that prayer from the heart, you're actually taking responsibility for all of it. If you stay in the model where you think the problem is out there and that you're praying for a solution, you're praying to some God out there to intervene and change things or change people, um, then that doesn't work. That's not how it really works. It's a false idea of the universe. And as we're moving more in towards a conscious level, and I'm by that I mean we are moving towards it. Science, progressive science is now discovering that the Newtonian model of physics of materiality first and then consciousness somehow came after and that model cannot answer the problem. They don't, cannot explain. It's just a dead end. They can't understand consciousness when they try to do it that way around. 
um, but, but that uh, old-fashioned model would say that some things that are living and breathing have consciousness as if it's an attribute that's att att um, attributed to them and um, it's kind of, it's almost like plants have a, a, a small amount of consciousness and animals have a little bit more and then human beings have more, even more consciousness okay, because we're self-aware. So um, that's the idea, but we can't explain how consciousness is attached to and uh, attaches itself to our physicality. It has no answers. In the consciousness first model, everything is an arising in consciousness. Everything that we perceive with the five senses is an, is an arising in consciousness. It's not really out there. It's kind of like a hologram that is so realistic to us because of our programming. And we can't, in a way, get ourselves outside of the programming to observe it because we're in it. But by faith, we understand and it is by faith. It's by saying, well, OK, I'm going to use and practice this other way of understanding it all. And the other way of understanding it is that that if it's all created by consciousness, then consciousness can change it. It can change what shows up out there. And the mystics have known this throughout the centuries. The mystery schools have taught this. They've taught as above, so below. As within, so without. And Jesus knew this. There's, um, I was looking at this passage. I forget where it is. Let me see. I think I wrote it down. Let me just, um, let me just see. Here it is. Luke, Luke 1940. I tell you, if these people were to keep silent, the very stones will cry out. The context of that was, I think he was, he was going into Jerusalem and the Pharisees, the religious leaders, were saying, keep these people silent. They were all praising, shouting Hosanna and they were excited because of all the miracles. And as I understand it, the, the, the Pharisees were, were wanting to, the religious teachers were like, oh, we haven't verified these miracles. We're not convinced of them. You need to shut the crowd up <laughs> because um, they shouldn't be saying these things. It's blasphemous. Keep, tell them to be quiet. And Jesus replied, even if I tried to silence them, the very stones would cry out, would shout out. And that's meaning truth. You can't silence truth. You know, if you try to silence people, the very stones, the very fabric of the earth will testify to truth. And that's what we're seeing unravelling in the in the world, in the science, in our understanding of science, because the earth is itself an arising in consciousness, which means it's sacred, God is in it. It's just a part of God, just God in drag, as everything is, as you are and I am. So, the idea occurred to me to use items to objects, anything, to assist with spiritual practice, with the cleaning, programming. Um, so what do I mean by programming? We could say that it's a form of spiritual technology, because we understand that today in our modern age. We understand that if something goes wrong, if our, if our computer is malfunctioning, and especially because of a network, because of hacking, you know, if somebody puts a virus in or some kind of, I don't know, something that will uh, change the program throughout the whole network, the whole banking system could be brought down. The whole, you know, countries, nations would just cut, everything would collapse because we're so used to relying on this network now that connects us all internationally and so um, if you had something malfunctioning you would ask someone who knew what they were doing to come into your computer go into the back of it and by that I mean open up you know I forget what it's called it's a different kind of mode isn't it that it starts up in and it, it's just like a black <laughs> it's just like a black page and just a load of different digits and numbers and letters and it makes no sense to you or, or it might make sense to you it makes no sense to me but someone who knew what they were doing would just type in a lot of code and then uh, and then the code is programmed to do its job and would clean up clean up find the virus and clean it up 
and so that the uh, computer, the whole system, would start functioning correctly, properly again, uh, differently. And so, um, so that's the way to think about what we're doing when we're using the whole when we're when we're using prayer and cleaning. What we what falls off ourselves when we clean up for ourselves, we're cleaning up for the whole network because we're all part of a consciousness grid and uh, there's no separation so we're, we're, we're not isolated from that which is a wonderful news uh, it's not wonderful news if you want to keep everybody separate and divided and uh, you want to divide and rule it's not wonderful news if you've invested heavily in material things like money and um, and you suddenly realize that that, that, that the true value is love and uh, uh, and you haven't really invested very heavily in that because you've uh, you've been trading in hate or um, you know and anyway the point is everything is an arising in consciousness and I, I thought about those words of Jesus about the stones actually I remembered that there is a line in the song Jesus Christ Superstar a song called Hosanna and it says something like um, if every tongue was still, the noise would still continue. The rocks and stones themselves would start to sing. And um, and so that's what we're going to do. The, the, the rocks and stones, we can make them sing. We can program them to sing, to clean up, to sing a song of praise, to sit, to remember that they're that they're coded to do and to continue doing that even while we're getting on with our lives, the rest of our lives. So I thought about my uh, my prayer requests, if you like, that I wrote in my hexagons and I used some of the things that I found in this little bowl that I have. I have this little bowl sitting uh, in, my, uh, in my bedroom on the windowsill and I picked it up and it's got a number of different things from nature, objects. It's got a shell. It's got a shell there, a mussel shell. And it has... Um, that. That's just a little, like a little um, crystal ball. A tiny little crystal ball. It's got this other ball here. That's I think that's onyx. So you can use crystals if you have crystals. Um, or again, shells. Another shell there. And I've actually got some, um, I'll just say, I think there's a, there's a little bit of a cuttle, cuttlefish there, look, can you see that? And, um, and also, there was a little bit, I just took it out earlier, a little bit of cinnamon, a cinnamon stick. <laughs> and so what I did was, as I thought about the different things, or I took one topic in particular, I just um, picked something out of the bowl as, as I felt drawn to it. And then I held that as I thought about what I wanted to ask. And I'm going to just tell you one of those things. So I was thinking about the rainforest. And um, my, my hand went to this for some reason. I don't know, I held, I held the onyx for the, for the rainforest. And uh, and it just so happened that on Sunday there was a really important vote in Brazil. Uh, Brazil Brazil was voting for their president, and so there was there were two people. And you know, at a human level, I could have thought, no, who is more likely to? Which of these two candidates is going to more likely help save the planet? We all need that that rainforest in Amazon, and it's just. It, the deforestation has just increased massively. I think it was 38,000 kilometres, square kilometres of rainforest was lost even in the last year alone. Um, and it's it's just a big concern for all of us because the, the rainforest is, the Amazon, is the, the lungs of the earth, aren't they? And so, um, so I could have just thought, please let so-and-so win. The, the, the candidate that I felt would be most likely looking at the track record to um, to preserve and uh, perhaps you know and to make illegal the and uh, you know chopping down of the of the trees 
and logging and stuff. And I know that that's, it's not as straightforward as that because there'll be an undercurrent and uh, there'll be a backlash. So that would be at a human level, I might just ask, please let this person win the election. Hooray. <laughs> but um, really, it's the higher, that, that would be intention. If I, if I were to think of an intention myself, I'm limited by my own understanding. That's what I'm trying to say. So what I was shown to do was to hold a vision. What is the vision for that area and that region? And the vision for that region is that at a local level, the ordinary people won't be fighting among themselves. And that's what it is. It isn't big corporations going in and doing all the cutting down of the trees. It's farmers that are knowing they can earn a little bit more money if, if they chop their trees down and allow it for grazing, cattle grazing. Uh, because they can sell the beef, you know, so, um, and then it's people, the indigenous community coming and saying, we can't live, we rely on the rainforest, so they're, they're, they're fighting among themselves at a very local level, because they just all want to be able to have enough money to feed their families, so, so the, the vision is, so a kind of symbiotic relationship between the land and the people where everyone has what they need a joyous symbiotic, symbiotic uh, interflow and that might be uh, that might be that the world needs to support a little bit more because we all rely and need the rainforest it might be that dividends are given to local people to allow the rainforest to stay to not cut them down so that they have money to be able to feed their families you see I don't know but it was trying to imagine in a bigger way beyond just um, just the short term. And so it's about stepping back and simply allowing the unconscious God to uh, determine the outcome and to let my own opinions get out of the way. But the unconscious knows. And all things work together for good in, the, in that wonderful network that is on a trajectory towards love an expansion towards unity and love and I have to f just believe that and trust that and I'll talk more about that when I talk about the new sphere and Tayo de Chardin but that will have to wait for another video because that's where the hope is it's knowing that there is a plan that's drawing us back towards unity and love and so um, in my small mind I'll have my own opinions and ideas but I can step aside from that and trust the greater plan and I know every time I look at that now that that's being worked on, that's being cleaned, that whole area that is causing problems, that has been a blockage and a problem is being cleaned. Another thing was the um, disclosure. Disclosure. You know, I've been thinking about this word disclosure. You hear it a lot, people saying the disclosure is near and it's all to do with truth. Just as I said earlier, you know, when Jesus said, if you, if you ask the people to be silent, the very rocks will start to, they, they will shout out. The, the truth will out. And, um, you know, there are masters of deception that change the story about what's happening. And they change it in such a way that they are the heroes and the villains are over there. And I'm thinking about um, people that I mentioned earlier that are highly, hugely invested in this world, in this material, in the materiality of the third dimension, and also who trade in hate, you know, um, who make their money uh, from peddling hate. And so when the stories, uh, stories that, that serve an agenda are believed through the media that's put out there. I was thinking about this as well, you know, and the, the, I'm not going to say any names, but uh, there is a, a platform that's owned, I mean, there's one person that it owns many different platforms, media companies throughout the world, and is in a very powerful position because of that. And one of their channels, um, platforms, is actually given the name of, a, of an animal. And the name of the animal is one that in mythology and fable is associated with like deceit, deception, sly, cunning, 
you know, um, um, if that's not a, a little bit of self-awareness there, but it's also, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, I don't know if people have even thought that because the people that follow and watch that news channel probably don't, they aren't conscious or aware that they're being tricked and they're being deceived. But there's a little bit of something tongue-in-cheek going on and even thinking of using that name. Anyway, this is what's holding space for the cleaning and the disclosure. And one thing that I notice as I look at this, is it's just so totally transparent. There's nowhere to hide. Nowhere to hide. You can probably see. Can you see the, little, the ring light <laughs> as I hold it up? So you can see what's behind the camera, you can see what's behind the scenes that would normally perhaps be hidden from you. I wouldn't want you to see everything that's over there, but there's no hiding because it's just being reflected back. There is something truthful about this little crystal ball. Um, and also, you know, what's interesting is that uh, as I look into it, the image of what is in front is completely reversed turned upside down. The first will be last and the last will be first. And I was just thinking about that story again, you know, the story that's put out there. The story that says disclosure is coming, the truth will be revealed, and the villains will be held to account, and the heroes will be win the day. And it might be that, uh, that that's turned upside down, the heroes aren't who you think and the villains are who you don't expect so uh, truth will be out and so so I, that's holding space just for for transparency and truth and that will sit there too and every time I watch the news and see something that uh, that I feel is in my heart is an injustice then I'm, I'm saying, along with everyone, bring on the disclosure. But there'll be a lot of people that will need support through that because um, compassion will be needed to support people who, whose whole world have, have invested a lot, everything, into following. Um, yeah. And... Uh, and how do we know truth? Because we go back to the heart. The heart cannot be deceived because the heart is on a trajectory of love. What comes out of the mouth? Oh, what Jesus said, what's something that was it now? Just come to my mind. What comes out of a man's mouth betrays the heart. And it's interesting, and certainly we're seeing this in the UK. I don't know about you anywhere else, but um, it's almost as though people are just speaking their minds a lot more. Even politicians getting into trouble for it. But it's kind of like, you know what you're dealing with. It's transparency. You know? Uh, let's call it for what it is. Let's not pretend that we, we don't have these thoughts that are a lot of the time hateful and lack compassion. But, uh, but that's all. That's all part of the disclosure, seeing what really is there. Anyhow, I hope my little bowl of stones might have inspired you and that you might be able to get your own little bowl of stones, holding space, doing the cleaning, of the things that concern you in your life, for your family, your loved ones, your community and for our world. Next time, think a little bit more about coding I do want to talk more about the new sphere, uh, so I plan to do a video on that soon, but also then I plan to use the holy names, and that's when it'll start to get really interesting. Okay, thanks for watching, take care, all my love, God bless.